I'm Jeff Harrison, I'm a stereographer, working on a music project here at Air Studios today. Uh, in principle, 3D is about trying to cheat the brain into believing it's seeing two separate images, which are a three-dimensional configuration of what's in front of them. And we're doing that by using two cameras. Um, they're any type of cameras, stills cameras, video cameras, any, anything you like. We're using top quality um, broadcast HD cameras at the moment. They're fairly large. To get the quality, that becomes a bit of an issue for us. Our eyes are a certain distance apart, say 65 millimeters nominally is, is most human eye distance. These are a lot more than that. It creates an issue whereby we have to try and repeat what our eyes do, which is to change positions, change focus all the time. Uh, we do that with this rig. We can change the relative distance of the cameras to each other, and we can change the angles of the cameras or what they're pointing to, to try and repeat what our eyes would be doing in automatic mode when we're looking at things. Um, there's several types of rigs. This is a side-by-side. -side. It's fairly basic. It's fairly um, ordinary. Lots of on the market and you can achieve a certain amount of things. What you can't do is get very close because when these two lenses are looking at something very close to the camera, then you end up with different backgrounds on each of the shots which you can't then put back together. It becomes very unnatural for the brain. So we then use a thing called a mirror rig. So one camera would shoot through the mirror and one shoots down off the mirror. One's going through the mirror this way, one's coming off the mirror. And they would see the same image and we can then adjust their relative positions, adjust the what's called the convergence, which is what they're focusing in on. We have motors all over the lenses to adjust zooms and focus and aperture and everything else. It gets quite complex, but it's really quite exciting because the whole of our lives, we're used to seeing three dimensions. We're used to seeing things that have a depth to them. And we've spent many years trying to make these all three dimensional with camera moves, with lighting, with all sorts of different techniques. Having real 3D is just so immersive that you just feel like you're there, whether it's a music show like this, or whether it's a piece of sport or a piece of drama. Just two people sitting in the room talking. If it's in 3D, you feel more like you're there. As you do with stereo sound and anything else, we've got two ears, so we hear things coming from different directions. Few people, 5% of the population, can't see 3D for whatever reason. Maybe they've very weak eye or just one eye. Over. But most of us are used to seeing life in 3D. Once you've seen it on a screen, then it's very, very, very drab to go back to 2D again. It's quite an exciting prospect. A big challenge for all of us to try and get these two machines <laughs> to do the same thing at the same time. Um, and, and that's where the, the uh, development's happening at the moment within the world, that's what we're all we're, we're working on. 3D's been around since uh, 1870, the first 3D piece of photography and then filmmaking. Um, it was very difficult with film cameras because they're physical things, running bits of film through a camera, you couldn't really sync it up, it was complicated. Digital technology has made it very available now. All cinemas can show 3D if they want to put the right piece of kit in and uh, just about everyone's working on it. There's, 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 I don't know any visual company that's not going 3D direction at the moment. Quite exciting times. So the, the, the capture of these particular cameras is on tape. Uh, the other cameras we've got around are flash cards, P2 flash cards. It's all Panasonic kit we we're using today. The two eyes are then kept separate. They're taken back to the edit suite and you would put them into an edit suite with two eyes they become two channels on the timeline you would edit one one of the eyes and the other eye would then automatically within your 3d edit suite would come in line with that and then you would want to adjust the relative, relative positions we've done most of the adjustment here and I'd, i would hope to leave a set with everything the way it should be it never is you always want a little bit of alignment the lenses might be slightly different sizes everything variations you would then adjust within that edit suite and you would end up with two images, a left eye and a right eye, as two separate pieces of file, a file each on two timelines. We, we would then take those and want to merge them together, overlay them, which can be done several different ways. You can overlay with red-green, which the monitor will be lining up with here, which is called analog, Anaglyph, or you go onto a 3D monitor, which are the things that have been launched at the moment by all sorts of people. That's what we're here for today, to launch a pa the, the, the Panasonic version of that, which are either um, alternate images showing 120 times a second and glasses that will, will show you the right image at the right time and close off the eyes which are called active glasses, an active system or polarised screens where you wear uh, dark glasses which are actually polarised in opposite directions 
either circular or angular or diagonal. There are three different sorts of polarization screens. And they would overlay the software in your edit package, would overlay the left and right eye together in the right positions to each other to give you the right feeling so that you can contain the scene and enjoy a 3D environment. We want the 3D to be maximum, but not too much because your brain gets confused and you get headaches. If it's too little, it's not worth watching. So uh, that's where the, the edit process happens. Again, lo lots of manufacturers are working on 3D edits because it's becoming big time. Walt Disney say they're never going to make a, another 2D film, which would include P Pixar, Touch, Touchstone. There's all sorts of people that are working on 3D. Obviously, the big mega movies from the States are going 3D, but there's a lot of films happening in the UK as well. Um, half a dozen at the moment. Most sports are talking about 3D. It's uh, all those people, it's a big market, all those people are going to have to deal with twin images. Very, very critical to get them in sync. They've got to be exactly the right moment. If, if the two cameras are capturing a scene slightly different times and there's an action, a wheel going round, then that becomes juddery, becomes double vision. It's not 3D anymore, it becomes double vision, blurred vision. No one wants to watch it. It's very, very, very critical to get the crystal sync worked out, the gen lock. Uh, stills cameras are starting to get into 3D, 5Ds, we're, we're all, we've all done some 5D photography um, with the video sections of, of 5D. They can't gen lock at the moment, you just cannot get that gen lock together, at which point it's great for a still frame, fine for me standing here looking at the camera, no good for action. You get someone running across a field and it does that with, it, with these legs. So it, the technology is not there yet, travelling very, very fast, Ch changes every month or so, but uh, it's coming. You know, it, and, Sky launching its channel as well is, is going to boost everyone to spend some money and uh, it's going to work within this year, 2010 is going to be a big 3D year.